Sambonani. I see we have a full house today. Thank you for joining us, uh, uh, lastminute.com. Uh, uh, we welcome our officials uh, to our media briefing right now. We've got um, our Treasurer General, we have our National Chairperson, obviously we have our DSG, our SG, our Deputy President and our CIC. I'm going to hand over to the Deputy President right now. No, thank you very much, uh, Commissar Lien, uh, <coughs> our national spokesperson, and the, the president of the EFF and commander in chief, the secretary general, DSG, a national chairperson, the TG, uh, and members of the media. Uh, Good afternoon. Uh, we've called this press conference uh, as the officials of the EFF now so that uh, we get an opportunity to uh, publicly read out the letter which I sent yesterday to the President and Commander in Chief in terms of. Uh, politics of South Africa. I'm going to read the, the letter word per word so that there are no speculations in terms of the basis upon which we are communicating this particular decision. So the letter says, greetings uh, comrade president. The chairperson of Ward 44, Johannesburg, has informed me that my membership of the EFF has lapsed. And I said, please be informed that I will not renew my membership of the EFF in Ward 44, which is one of the best performing wards in Johannesburg region. I also request to resign my position as member of parliament and all positions in the EFF. I will only do so after receiving a go-ahead from the organization because it is the EFF that deployed me to parliament. I cherish and appreciate the work that we collectively did in the EFF and building a formidable organization. I believe the aspirations and vision contained in the organizational redesign document of the EFF can still be achieved that the visions that are contained in the organizational redesign document of the EFF can still be achieved, and that I believe so. That my non-renewal of EFF membership is not a vote of no confidence in the organization, but a revolutionary act that will allow progressive forces to unite and work towards the agenda for progressive and revolutionary change. I have never in my service of the organization acted outside its democratic and revolutionary decisions, discipline and practice. I have served with humility and discipline. I will never abandon the cause for economic emancipation and true freedom in our lifetime. I will never compromise my commitment to true emancipation and I will never abandon my commitment to the Marxist-Leninist ideological lenses and view and guide to action in my understanding of society. I will not do and say anything that will compromise the integrity of the organization that we have collectively founded. My sincere plea is that in its reflection of the decision that I have taken, the organization should also avoid mischaracterization of an otherwise revolutionary and disciplined decision to not renew membership of the EFF and the request that I must be released from all areas that I'm deployed on behalf of the EFF. And then say that we have over the years played an important role in shaping the politics of South Africa and the continent, the African continent, we have all played our parts progressively, and I have no doubt that we will continue to do so in our respective different responsibilities. 
I firmly believe that political decisions should never be personalized and treated as betrayal of the cause and of individuals. I say, Comrade President, you are my brother and comrade, and will always cherish the contributions we made in our lives uh, during the formation of the EFF, even prior to that. I wish the economic freedom fighters full prosperity and success and wish that all the commissars and ground forces and public representatives and members of the EFF Students Command will accept this very difficult decision that I have taken. The struggle and war for economic freedom will never be compromised by any individual decision. It has been ingrained in the hearts and minds of many people in South Africa and the entire African continent. A revolutionary regards and God bless and the letter is signed off. And just to give clarity so that there is no uh, speculation, I've decided not to renew the membership of the EFF because I will join and participate in Umkonto as a party. I am not going to speak here in Winima Digizela Mandela House as to what is the basis of that because that will be tantamount to campaigning already for Umkonto as a party. So I'm going to be actively involved in Umkonto as a party uh, and shape uh, its direction and the politics that are obtaining today in South Africa. So that is to end the uncertainty or speculations that have been obtaining in terms of what is going to happen. There is no specific position that has been assigned to me. There is no commitment or any promise of deployment to parliament or to anything. It's a decision that I have taken and I think and believe that it will add meaningful value to the progressive and revolutionary politics that must be pursued by all the progressive forces in South Africa. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, DP. Um, CIC, I'll hand over to you to say something. Thank you very much, uh, members of the media, the officials of uh, the EFF, I stand before you to accept the decision of the Deputy President of the EFF, who has voluntarily resigned his positions and did not renew his membership. When he sent me a letter yesterday, I felt the same pain when I received the news of the passing away of my mother. Because Floyd, to me, is not just a comrade, he's a brother. And he will remain a brother even when he pursues his political career differently. We formed this organization together. And I've told him that resigning from the EFF is equal to resigning from himself because this is his organization. The constitution of the EFF does not allow people to resign and join other political parties and come back to the party. But I've made this offer to Floyd that the day you decide to come back, you are more than welcome because you are not a member. You are a founder of this political party. So you are not our enemy, will never be your enemies, will continue to engage on different political and personal issues. Um, Floyd is not the only one. Uh, Jimmy Mani has also resigned uh, to go and join MK. Uh, and uh, there will be many others who are going to leave the EFF because they've got their loyalty and support to the deputy president. So uh, fighters on the ground should be prepared for more people to follow. 
and um, this should not serve as a point of collapse for the EFF. This is a testing moment. The organization that has lived beyond 10 years has never been through this testing moment. The EFF will have to pass this test or it will have to die. And we, as members and leaders of the EFF, will defend its life, will make sure it lives forever for generations to come. It is the responsibility of the provincial leaders, the regional leaders, and the branch leaders to consolidate the ground and strengthen the branches of the EFF. This is not the end. It's a beginning of a journey because we have turned 10 years and this is a new chapter for the EFF. So you can be rest assured that we are not going to be howling insult at each other. We are not going to be speaking bad about each other. Individuals make individual political decisions. And they will stand by those decisions. We all write our own individual history. And the deputy president has decided to write his own history. And individuals will leave the organization, but the organization must still stand because the organization must live beyond individuals. If it is an organization, it can't rely on the existence of individuals, including me as a person. If it happens one day, I die, the EFF will have to live beyond me because the EFF has got its own founding manifesto, its own uh, election manifesto. The EFF is well represented in parliament and will continue to execute um, its responsibilities. We wish DP all of success. We know that wherever it's going, it's going to be of value. We have lost a valuable member as the EFF, but the show continues. Thank you. Yeah, Bonga CIC. So we're going to take questions, but one round. So, whoa, President, do you see? <laughs> Everyone's hands are going up. So we'll start over here. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, and that's it. Uh, I didn't see you. And number eleven, and we close in. And number one, Samkele Masego. Samkele Masego. Not Samkele. What did I say? Samkele. Not Samkele. Yes. From the SABC. My question is uh, directed to Mr. Shivambu and also to you, Mr. Malema. To Mr. Shivambu, what ultimately led to your decision to leave the July 26 movement that you ultimately formed after the Marikana massacre? Two, there have been reports in the past of a very fictitious relationship between yourself and Mr. Malema. Did this ultimately contribute to your ultimate decision to join the MK party? Thirdly, in KwaZulu Natal, when you were a deployee, you were perceived as someone who is purging the supporters of Marshal Damini. And some may have perceived you as a Trojan horse that was sent inside the EFF to work to weaken it in order for the gains of the MK party within that particular province. Any substance or credence to those particular allegations. Then, on a last one on you, Mr. Shivambu. On Monday, it's reported that you met former President Zuma in Kwatagwatunuse in Gandla. Did you have this meeting with Mshanganyelwa at his homestead? To Mr. Malema, speaking at the 10th anniversary gala dinner in Kempton Park, you spoke about how you would never want Floyd to coalesce behind your back. And if that were to ever happen, you would ultimately be ruthless politically as you've been in the past. 
What does this say about your relationship with him, now being the one who chooses to leave, as opposed to your words to say that if they want you out, they must just come to you, and you will simply drive away to the sunset and leave them with this July 26 movement? Thanks. Mr. Malema, do you feel as if your association and embracement of former President Zuma, particularly after the tea, has contributed to the negative fortunes of the EFF, as many have been confused of the nature of the EFF and Jacob Zuma, henceforth the elections. Thank you. You might have covered all the questions for everybody else. Uh, and number two. <laughs> I think some girl has already asked all the questions. Uh, um, just to find some clarity, I think you'll educate us politically in terms of the constitution of the EFF. Will they be a replacement for DP immediately, or that will, that will be decided at the next conference in December? Thank you. Or oh, Muriba, Muriba from the inside factor. Sorry. Number three. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's uh, Zian Dongobo from Newsroom Africa. Just following off of my colleague's question, Samkela Masego, Mr. Malema. Um, there's also been a lot of speculation, and perhaps she can also speak for herself, that Veronica Mente and Boisen Inclosi are also set to follow uh, the DP. Who exactly are you aware of possibly leaving the EFF? You also just mentioned it. Mr. Malema, did you see it coming? And then lastly to Mr. Shivambu, what is it about the MK party that was so attractive that you'd leave your own movement that you started yourself? Um, what, is, what was the nature of the discussions to have you cross over? I know you said you don't want to discuss much here, but just if you could give us a brief summation. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Salano Makwidi Ria from Salam Media. My question is uh, to Mr. Julius Malema. Um, your relationship with MK now, is it cordial? Uh, do you feel hard done and blindsided by them? Uh, you mentioned that a few members will be following the deputy president. From now onwards, how will you be interacting with the MK? Thank you. Number six. Seven. Uh, good afternoon, Shannon Merrix from Kasi Broadcasting Africa. My question is the DP and the president can respond to this. Uh, as we've, we've been public about this, that MK was started to destroy EFF and ANC, even before elections. You can check our Twitter, we've been public. We've also been public about people in uh, EFF that are almost uh, playing for two teams. We've been public. You, you know Twitter, you can go and check all those. So we are not even surprised with the list of people resigning and going to the MK because we made those predictions. We saw the results of in KZN. We saw after EFF at FNB, had over 100,000 people. When it went to Northern Cape, that event for a, a celebration it looks to us, not to you, to us, that that event should have had more than that number of people. The results in KZN, it's our opinion. People in EFF didn't attack MK because there's no way you can deploy people in KZN in some of the province. They deployed there, they can't see MK is a threat. MK was never under attack by EFF. That's our assessment. Whether we're wrong or right, whether you agree or disagree. So what is happening today, you can go to our tweets before elections. It's what we predicted. And we're not even surprised with the people leaving. But politically, for Floyd Shibambo and Julius Malema, 
uh, Julius Malema coming from Shisheho, Floyd coming from Jimmy Jones, I know you'll remain friends because politically you are more mature than that. But how do you say to those that will now, the split where Jimmy Mani decided to do, join MK, where uh, somebody else will have to decide uh, to join Julius Malema, how do you respond to those people about your political decisions to understand that they are not enemies, they should be as mature, and I'm happy you both here. But for me, I saw this coming, I'm not surprised, sorry. Go check our tweets. It's, it's, it's a sad moment, but we saw this coming, thank you. This was a long preamble, thank you. Number nine. <laughs> Number nine. Mohamed Baum from uh, Radio Islam International. Uh, Mr. Malema, is this the beginning of the end of the EFF? Number 10. Uh, my greetings to the house. In uh, terms my name, from Welela News. Uh, <clears throat> this question directed to the president. Uh, as it's been alleged that uh, the deputy president, Floyd, he had a meeting on Monday at Inkandla with the president, Zuma. If it's a, yes, he had, was a president aware about that meeting that was taking place? And the letter that you received from Floyd yesterday, also of Jimmy Mani, when was it received? Is it also received yesterday? Thank you very much. And lucky number 11, thank you. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lunga from the Mail and Guardian. Look, uh, President, mine is just to you. Uh, is, is, what was the decision of uh, maybe Mr. Shibambu based on saying that there were issues of purging, that maybe you were afraid that he was going to challenge you in, in, the, in, in the next conference? Did maybe Mr. Shibambu can also maybe speak on that to say, was it an issue where, because what, from what I hear is that uh, there were descending voice that maybe you should step aside the new minds should come to play and uh, maybe another leader should take over the party. So is this not, is, is this not what caused uh, the situation of where you are now? Thank you so much. Thank you and we won't be taking any more questions after that. Uh, DP, can I hand over to you to respond and then President, uh, you will close, thank you. No, thank, thank you very much, uh, Commissar Lien. The, I, I thought I'd indicated when Oh, <laughs> to speak from this facility. No, thank you very much for the questions. And I, I, I thought we had said when, in the main uh, statement that I don't want to speak about the Mkondo Esizwe party here. Uh, so if you say, why did you join and what attracts you, then you are forcing me to speak about Um Kondowis as a party and the reasons. I will talk about Um Kondowis as a openly in the appropriate platforms. And that is what we'll do. What I know though is that the progressive caucus charter, which was co-signed by Um Kondowis as a party the Economic Freedom Fighters, the ATM, the NCC, and the UAT. Amongst other things, it says that we shall fight for expropriation of land without compensation for equitable redistribution. So that joint charter which we signed also says that we're going to fight for the nationalization of the commanding heights of the economy, in particular the mines and the banks. It also says that we're going to strengthen our democracy by ensuring that the government and all captains of the ruling class are held accountable to achieve a corrupt free society. It also says that we shall fight for the decolonization of legal and cultural apparatuses in society as a whole with emphasis on, on an Afrocentric philosophy of law 
So the charter which we jointly say, signed says that we shall fight for free quality education, health care, housing, water, and sanitation. It also says that we're going to fight for the industrial development of the African economy, attainment of peace and stability in all its nations. And it also says that we shall defend and promote the liberation, struggle legacy, and progressive internationalism. And part of the key tenets of the political ideological agreement that uh, I know jointly defines the EFF and Mkonto as a party is anti-capitalism, it's anti-racism, it's anti-sexism, it's anti-colonialism. And there was an anti-imperialist character as well, the rule of law. And those are the values which I know I can say this because these are values that commonly they characterize the political parties. So one thing which I don't do, some Kel, I'm sure you could have realized is that I don't entertain rumors and speculations. So even if people spread false things about what happened and what didn't happen, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I deal with politics and political content strictly. So every time I'm going to have a political discussion or a media discussion, it will strictly be on content issues and how do we shape society, how do we build a progressive society which is going to benefit the black majority and Africans in particular. So that is the agenda that we're going to be communicating. Those things of who met who, when, and all of those things, <laughs> like, I went to Kanda during elections so last year when we were setting up structures. I've never been to Kanda in the recent past, but I don't want to enter into that discussion. Uh, and I will not be tempted, not once, to take platforms to talk about uh, personal issues. All the time, we'll stick to the commitment of talking politics, of content, of ideology, of just how do we take society forward. That is strictly what we're going to deal with. The rest of the issues, I don't think they are worth responding. Thank you very much. No, to DP, uh, CIC can hand over to you to close. Um, uh, me and Floyd had a meeting yesterday at this place for a very long time, just the two of us. Because when I got the news, I was in Pulugwan. Um, and I asked to see him, and I met him. We had an uh, open, frank debate about it. And then later, we joined by the SG. We spoke about everything. And then uh, this morning at 10, we had uh, a meeting of the officials, and then we were invited to the last lunch <laughs> by the TG <laughs> after the meeting. So before we came here, we ate together. <laughs> um, because there's nothing personal about political personal decisions. Uh, so you can be rest assured nothing is really uh, going to affect our relationship. Well, I've got no relationship, none whatsoever, or association with President Zuma. I don't have any kind. So um, we fought President Zuma, and then when he was out, we're done with it. Um, so to pursue him, even after his term of office, will be unreasonable. Uh, and that's why I never saw a need to speak bad about him in the elections because my focus was on the main political party that we seek to remove from power. So I can't be concentrating on other political um, opposition parties instead of concentrating on the main target, which was um, the ANC and the DA. Uh, those were the two parties ahead of us. So that's what we, we focused on. Um, and I've never taken any platform to speak bad 
about President Zuma because I believe that it's not my space to be fighting other small political parties. We need to focus on the main um, enemies of the revolution. There are people who spoke very bad about MK, spoke very bad about President Zuma, who are going to join him now. That's the nature of politics. Uh, politics, if we're in the stock market, it was going to be a very volatile stock because of in and out. You can't say, no, they are here, they are forever here. Um, uh, so uh, we, we take that risk um, as we continue to build the organization. There will not be any replacement of the DP because we're going to the conference in December, so there's no need. Um, but also, if you appoint anyone to be DPD president now, you are creating expectations. And when we arrive there, that person is not elected as president. Uh, you cause more problems now. So um, we are very fortunate, though unfortunate, that it happens on the eve of the conference. And um, the conference will be able to, re to resolve that. Um, I can't give a list of who's going to join MK uh, after Floyd. I didn't know Floyd was going to join MK. So if I didn't know about Floyd, can you imagine about others? Because I'm more close to Floyd, uh, more than anyone else. So if I didn't know about Floyd, uh, you can expect that there will be uh, others. Um, our relationship with MK does not get affected by individual members joining MK or leaving MK to join EFF or anything. Our relationship is defined by what the deputy president has read as a charter for progressive caucus. And that's what brings us together uh, with MK. I don't know about pending charges of VBS or anything of that sort. Uh, so I wouldn't say there was anything um, necessitated by that. Um, some I know of a long list of people who are double pegging. They're EFF, they're MK, I know them. Uh, sometimes I tell them that this one is going to move, this one is going to move, this one. Um, um, so uh, some of these things don't shock us because we anticipated them, we see them as they come. Um, but we must be rest assured that the organization will live beyond us. Um, you talk about FNB and then talk about Northern Cape. You know there are no people in Northern Cape. <laughs> <laughs> So you want a big rally in Northern Cape where there are no people, there are no people. The whole of Northern Cape was at that stadium. So what, what, where must I go get others from? <laughs> uh, 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 Northern Cape does not come anywhere close to Soweto. So you, to compare FNB with Northern Cape um, is unrealistic. And what is worse about FNB is that we had buses all over South Africa coming to the rally at the FNB. We didn't have that at the Northern Cape. Actually, the Northern Cape rally shocked us because we're just from the elections. People are exhausted, there's fatigue. But the way the people of Northern Cape responded reaffirmed that this organization is going to live for a very long time. This is not the beginning of the end of the EFF. This is the beginning of a new chapter for the EFF. This organization will be here for a very long time. Some girl, you know, we don't preside over failed projects. Once we put our mind into it, we put our souls into it, we will work tirelessly for this organization, including in KZN. We have not given up uh, on uh, a KZN.
um, I don't know of a meeting between uh, Floyd and uh, uh, President Zuma. When did Manny resign? Monday, this Monday. Yeah, m Monday. But even before he left, he sent me a message saying he wants to see me. He asked for an appointment through the SG, and the SG is not acting on that appointment, so he's coming directly to ask me for a meeting. I referred back the communication to SG, and SG's response was very simple. He's leaving, so <laughs> he's going to MK. So what meeting for what, because he's leaving? Why must we have a meeting? He's leaving. So he wants me to call you to come and tell you that he's leaving. He, he's leaving. And then, uh, uh, that, that was when Friday, Friday, Thursday, somewhere there, and then Monday he resigned. SG sent me the letter, and I've I've not done anything. I've not spoken to him. It's not my place. Um, he has made uh, his own uh, decision. Um, I'm not aware of uh, Floyd going to challenge me in the next conference of the EFF. If anything. Uh, where such rumors were raised, no one even bothered to bring them forward as a threat that, no, a uh, million guardian said this, uh, you see the plan of these guys is clear, because no one ever took that very serious, because there was no such a thing. And there was never a discussion to replace Floyd as the deputy president. All of the informal talks I've listened to, there's never been a single person who came to me and said, we need to remove Floyd. If anything, I've heard that Marshall is going to be contested and things like that. But I've never heard that about Floyd. Um, and that there's a possibility of a contestation between the two of us. So. Uh, it, this could not have been necessitated by a paging or um, uh, fighting between me and Floyd because there was no such a, a conflict. So uh, uh, we are where we are. Painful as it is, we have to accept it and we have to move on. Um, it was unaccept, uh, unexpected. Um, some of our leaders shed tears this morning because it came as a shock and they've never seen it um, uh, happening. So we, we accept it. There's nothing much we can do about personal decisions. When people take personal political decisions, that should never lead into enmity. We drink holy water with Castle Matan. For many years, since the formation of the EFF, but he's a member of the ANC, he's a leader of the ANC, he's a deputy minister of police. That has never made us to be enemies. So I'm giving you that example, that belonging to a different political party does not make you an enemy. But we must accept that people will have personal decisions and personal developments, and that we are not stuck where we are. What you need to know is that I will remain a loyal and disciplined member of the EFF, and that my coffin will be draped with the flag of the EFF. Even if I remain alone, I will do so because I'm loyal to this cause. And when there were rumors that I'm joining the ANC, my grandmother was still alive and said to me, you can join the ANC and get all the benefits you want, but what about these people who turned against the ANC in support of you? What's going to happen to these people? So many people's careers were destroyed. So many people
became poor and some lost even their homes because of this idea called the EFF. And to resign from it, I will be betraying those people who said we are prepared to take this risk because we believe in the vision of the EFF and its generational mission. So I want to reassure the ground forces of the EFF, loyal, hardworking, disciplined ground forces of the EFF. I am with you and I will never turn my back against this organization. And I will never turn my back against this building named after one of the best leaders our struggle has produced, Winnie Madigzela Mandela House. So, this organization has got leadership. This organization has got structures. And the structures are seized with the process of preparing for conference. So be rest assured, tomorrow, the doors of this building will still be opened. We are not closing this building today, and we are not closing this building tomorrow. It will remain here as a monument for the struggle for economic freedom in our lifetime. So I want to repeat, I will be buried with the flag of the EFF. My coffin will be trapped with the flag of the EFF, and I will never turn my back on my people. Thank you. Uh, thank you, CIC. Oh, no, that includes our presser for today. I will release the officials. Thank you, President. <laughs>